contact, right. Body contact, footwork, footwork. Every person look on the footwork. Don't forget, the first feet also goes forward, not backwards. It has to be forward. It's just like we slice the, the frames of the, do of the doors, okay? It's the same. Imagine that your partner is like the apex of the th threshold, okay? Good. Contact, right. Contact, left. Don't be lazy, don't sweep your friend head. First flow the weapon, then put it on thread. All right, let's talk about three of the most common room shape or structural shapes that we have in CQB. The first one is pretty simple, guys, right? It's a box-shaped room. Uh, we start with that on purpose in order for me to understand what is your general level of understanding of CQB. And before we will discuss some of the issues in these rooms, I want to uh, introduce you to the first terminology. So as you can see, we have here four corners in this room shape, right? Good. We like to divide them into two types easy corners and hard corners. Easy corners are going to be those corners over there which are deeper into the room. The reason why there are easy corners is because as I'm making my way to the room, slicing or whatever, I can always address and if needed to fight with these corners from outside without uh, forcing myself to run into the room and committing to other corners in the same time. Okay, so that's why we call it easy corners. We can fight from outside and we can always also bail away from them if needed. We talked previously about room shapes, movement, all that kind of stuff. So probably now you have a bigger picture into how human behavior works in this environment and how this environment itself affects our uh, tactical capabilities, right? Um, what is the biggest issue we have in CQB across, let's say, military or police context? Limited space. Limited space. How does it flagging. flagging each other, right? Taking the guns uh, uh, and flagging my friends. What else? What else is a problem? I mean, we can train this, right? But movement. what? Movement. How is this really a problem? Why, let me ask this way, why is this still a problem in higher level of performance? Or in other words, special forces guys ending up shooting each other and stuff like this. Why? Movement works probably most in time until the first shot is coming. Exactly. And then it's like everybody, like we heard um, before the human behavior, everybody is acting differently. So it's hard to, you to anticipate to basically. your, your disciplines and your drills. Okay, so basically here is the point. First of all, um, this environment is forcing us to work with too many guns in a very short proximity. Second, even though we tend to think always that we will be proactive, in the end of the day we will be reactive. Why? Because the threat will not be uh, neutralized after one shot or two shots, which probably he will be mobile, correct? Now if a threat is being mobile and I'm focused on engaging him, I have no capability or possibility by time and place to anticipate where are additional people located or positioned. So often when we look into uh, engagement in environments like this, or even in a house where everything is really tight, as soon as the threat starts to move or people starts to move unexpectedly, you see people flagging each other or sometimes shooting from the back. So that's the South African video, probably you all remember, right? The guy looking for the active shooter, he looks for him, the guy from the back looking as well, and the guy from the back was ironically the first person who was able to acquire a, a, a trajectory to the threat. He pulled the trigger, but in the same time he pulled what happened? The, the guy from the front stand up and moves to his line of fire and he capped him in the head. Was this uh, preventable? Can, could, could we have uh, prevented it through training? For sure, right? Muzzle before flash, online rule, exactly. Then we have the hard corners which are located here and here. Hard corners, just like they are hard, I need to make my way through the entry point in order to clear them, which means it's pretty much the last thing I have to do before entering the room, right? That means I'm exposing myself completely. And not only that I'm exposing myself completely, I have the following problems. The first one is that by the time I'm taking that uh, uh, corner over here, it doesn't matter in which kind of entry you're doing, button hook, center file, whatever, my ability to bail away is reduced in comparison to easy corners. In easy corners, I'm floating outside of the room, basically. Okay? The second issue I have is, is that that hard corner here and that corner, hard corner here in center frets, for example, often cannot be cleared at the same time. 
What is the average uh, 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 th threshold width, width today? How wide is it? 88 centimeter wide, standard, right? Something like this, give or take? Okay. We can't clear it in the same time, two people, right? We can't. We can do crisscross, of course. We'll talk tomorrow about whether it's efficient or not, but primarily we can't clear it in the same time. So that's another reason why we like to look into these corners as a hard corners, okay? They are problematic. Not only that I cannot bail in time, I can also not clear them in the same time. So what we will do now, instead of teaching you stuff like watch always to the left or the right of your muzzle, which in reality probably we will not be able to do it through behavior, um, I want to give you a principle-based training of two rules which we can apply into this environment. And those two uh, uh, rules may differ from each other in terms of what kind of environment I have or what kind of opportunity I have, okay? And we will walk through it, okay? What we will do is this. I will first explain for you um, the working environment that's normally a shooter will have, and after that we will break it down to rules, principles, and so on. Make sense? Good. I would like to have uh, you here in the center, okay? You will be facing this direction. Everybody else, get closer to him, make a circle around him, okay, good. Turn around and take two steps away from him. All right, give or take, turn around so of course you can see me, give or take, this is the shooter working zone. <coughs> in other words, this is, will be his reactionary gap to me. So, if I am within this sector, give or take two meters or two steps away from him, I will not have the possibility to anticipate his movement. If I will be here, I will not be able either to anticipate his movement, but we have a longer reaction time. Everybody understand? So for example, if I will be located right here and he will take just one step to the right, I will not be able to react because I don't have a reaction time. Make sense until now? Good, stay in the center. Okay, we defined it, okay? It's a give or take two meters or two steps. Honestly, it doesn't have to be something very like uh, uh, by centimeters, okay? Just generally. Make sense until now? So if we take this environment now into room clearing inside of buildings, you can already see how dangerous it is for several shooters who might have to work in, uh, in such a close proximity, right? L-shaped rooms. Where do we have L-shaped rooms in, 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 in daily life? Hotel room. hotel room, very good. So for example, exactly, in hotel rooms you will have up there to the right, you will have a box room. Here there will be the entry, the bed will be around here, maybe a nice balcony if you like balconies, I don't know. Okay, that's a very typical design. We have it in schools, we have it in a connection of two corridors, and also to a certain degrees in, in certain designs of staircases you will have the same effect. Okay, um, before I will break it down, because this is one of those room uh, shapes that we have problems with in terms of force and force. I want to give you a uh, context, okay? So I will play this example and after that we'll break this room down to pieces. Principle number one, which was uh, primarily uh, uh, coined by Trevor Trasher from the US, from ATA Tactical, and um, it's called like this, earning the shot, meaning for example, if I am standing here, and I will explain it really simple and to the point, if I'm standing here, and I hear something happening there, like for example, police hands up, and the next thing I'm hearing is a gunshot from him. Let's say he was doing, I don't know, a warning shot or something like this. And I'm turning around, and I'm here, and I see a threat. I need to earn the shot. I need to line up with him and earn the shot instead of trying from the backwards to see it. Because what we have often is that guys, they will stand somewhere or whatever, they will see a reason to shoot or deploy the weapon and instead of getting there and getting a clear uh, angle, they will do something like this. They will just turn around and immediately get soaked into the cover. So principle number one, earn it, okay? Either get close to him or away from him, which we will talk about in a second, but earn it. Don't be lazy and don't just stay there and try to uh, solve the problem from the back from your position. Make sense? Okay. Okay, everybody recognize here this L shape, right? Everybody recognize it? Okay, force on force. Two elements are clearing this compound, one to the left, one to the right, okay, pay attention. Also, I want you to pay attention a little bit to the behavior of the assault force, which is primarily using dynamic entries, and I want you to see how they will stop using these dynamic entries and their movement will be hesitant. Everybody see here the L shape. What's gonna happen here is a very classical situation. 
the force will come in, they will have an engagement with the threat, or they will be alerted to the presence of the threat and things will slow down. Remember this picture, this is your context, okay? Second point, recognize how this entire stack of people slow down. In kill houses, in training in the militaries, whatever, you never see that. You see everybody just running with flashbangs and metal music in the background. Right here there was a guy with just blanks, was not even shooting FX. And look how everybody slowed down. We'll get back to that. Let's apply two rules which can help us, depends on the position and, and, and the environment I have, to prevent friendly fire occurrences. Okay? Let's start with the first rule which is used for environments where I have space. Okay? So we are here, it's a pretty good example. Let's say it's a parking lot, okay? I have, I have space. And you will be facing that direction. Again, I will give a very simple, potato simple example. Um, I will hear a gunshot from him and I want to assist him. Let's say that the firefight is even still going. What I want to do in this case is, first of all, to listen where it's coming from. That will be my natural reaction. I will turn away, I heard some noise. I see the problem, I see maybe a threat. I see maybe the threat starts to run and I see my friend right now working him. Example-wise, we stay static, okay? What I want to do is to apply what we call the online rule. In other words, I will start to earn the shot, I will move away, and I will try to get an online with him, just like in small unit tactics, for example. Okay? Now, what I want to do is the following. I want to take two steps away from him, and I want to online my shoulder with his shoulders. It doesn't need to be perfect, but by taking two steps away from him and lining up my shoulders with his shoulders, there is no chance that he will run into my end of fire. So, for example, let's say that... Um, you will run sporadically to the right, okay? When I will say go. Go to the right. You see, there is no chance, even if you will bump into me, there is no chance that I will shoot from the back. However, if I would have been here, for example, and he will have that stoppage and he will make that movement again, do that movement, I don't have a reaction time. Clear for everybody? Online rule. Come here again one more time. To summarize that, Gunshot, whatever, I'm earning the shot, I'm getting that tra trajectory, taking two steps away from him and I'm lining up with him. Online rule. Make sense? Good. Are there any questions about that? Good. Let's do a really quick demonstration. Your gun is dry, my gun is dry, okay? Um, you will be over there as a threat, okay? Go over here if you can, just in front of him, okay? You're aiming on him right now and Let's say that I'm not applying the online rule. The only thing I'm asking you now is to take a very quick moving in that direction and he will follow you with a gun, okay? Good, ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, you saw how quick he's running into my line of fire, right? Let's apply to it all the movement we see normally in, in reality. There is no way for me to anticipate it and I will shoot him. However, if I will be in the online and he will run again and he will track him to the right, again, you see what happens. Yes, he can see me, but I am still away from him and we have that online effect and so on and so on. Okay, the first issue that we have with L-shaped uh, structures is that we don't have a complete domination from outside. In the box room, from the moment I'm positioned outside, I can see 80% of the room from outside, meaning the corners I cannot see, but I can cut greatly the threat ability to move from right to left. Do we agree on this? Good. In L-shape, we have the following problem that we cannot dominate the majority of the room. So for example, here it's a, perfect, it's a perfect example that the structure is divided into two parts. Known, meaning I can control it from outside, and unknown, an area that I cannot control. Okay, this is also important for you to understand that maybe in, in a military uh, context, you don't have to run inside. Because probably behind corners like this, there will be booby traps and IEDs, or an MG nest right here, and so on and so on. Back to our context, the first issue that we have is that we cannot dominate from outside. Make sense? Good. All right, now that you all understood it, uh, let's do a quick, very simple drill, okay? Um, you will be Alpha, all right? You will be Bravo. You will be Charlie, Charlie right there. And you will be Delta over there, okay? You will be out of the game just for now, okay? Sorry, we will be only three people. You will be also outside. We'll just keep it three uh, people just for now. Go backwards a little bit. Go backwards a little bit. Okay, good. The drill is like this. I gave them letters, right? So if he will say alpha, this is the threat. If he says bravo, he is the threat, so on and so on. Okay? You will bravo, actually. 
Make sense? Good. For us, again, this will not be 100% realistic because we're trying to replicate a realistic situation. Um, so what will happen is the following, you will be facing that direction, you are that direction, I am here, I have no idea where my friend is at. At some point, something is going to happen and we'll have to adjust my position to them. Okay? Guys, you are clear to go, you can say your letter, just five seconds delay from each other. We will do a quick demonstration, after that you will practice. Okay? As soon as you are on threat, pam, 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 whatever you can say. Okay? Three, two, one, and let's start. Okay, number two, it's an area that's normally is tight. It's an area that we normally use losing momentum and it's an area that is segmented in nature. Now, do you remember in the video, everybody slow down? That is a classical situation for losing momentum. What is the problem of losing momentum in this area? Who can tell me? Why is it problematic? The team is standing in a very tight space and they couldn't bail out. Very good, they cannot bail out, all right? So for example, if a threat will start shooting around the corner, which by the way, has only one angle which it can use for shooting, the entire team will not have a free space to move to. What else? Limited movement, like you said. For example, uh, let me add to your uh, point, also the movement back biomechanically will be problematic because if they want to move back, you will see people turning their backs and running all the way to the door which is again, will uh, bring in any element into a high probability of shooting each other, colliding with each other, or basically a very high amount of casualties. Um, let me get back into the whole story of uh, momentum really quick. Um, when we talk about the loss of momentum, there is a group here, uh, let's say they are reactive already, meaning there was already one gunshot or something like this. And here you'll see guys starting to cheat, uh, cheat with the angles. They stay there, they don't know what to do. The point man doesn't want to push forward, but the guys from the back wants to push him. And then there is the guys who start to talk and so on and so on. What happens here normally is that the entire element is spending here around 10 seconds, free floating, even more. Just like in the video, you remember when they were just standing there and the, and the, and the front guys, they were like kneeling down. So that element doesn't go nowhere, correct? So that element is in a really fragile situation because they cannot anticipate anyone who will come from here until it's too late. Meaning that even if there is some, I don't know, some snack bar guy in that corner over there and he's just running and popping a few rounds and runs back because you realize, shit, there is a lot of guys, the probability of one bullet catching uh, someone is really high. Okay, so basically we went through the topic of uh, friendly fire uh, prevention. Uh, this is a really important topic for us because um, one of the biggest issues that we have with a really big consistency is the issue of friendly fire. Or in other words, uh, um, individuals positioned in a way that is basically not applicable to a situation where the threat is mobile or perhaps I have more civilians in the environment and the environment is really lim limiting my ability to move. In other words, um, they will practice another thing they learned. Again, we believe in performance. So basically, instead of just talking and standing, we will show you how it really works. I want you to pay attention to their formation. I want you to pay attention how sometimes, due to the, to the, the, the dynamic of the movement, how guys will be positioned in a, in a position that is relatively dangerous for them and their friends. And that's why we train it. I recommend it to train it every uh, morning with your team for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it works. From my experience uh, working in different units, this is something that doesn't exist and it's extremely important to practice it. And um, yeah, let's, let's just check it out. Okay, so if they stay like this, for example, and you're now aiming at me, right? And I will start to run in this direction. If you follow me with a gun, just follow me a little bit. He will not be able to right away stop himself, right? Because he's fixed on a threat, correct? But even though if I cause him to make this 
sudden movement to the right, he still have a little bit of reaction time before he will flag his friend. What will friend will do? The same thing. He will try to run with me, and that's how we can prevent this uh, 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 weapon flow issue, right? So, Charlie! Threat, 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 threat! So you could see how quick it was pushing him into a situation where he had to work with an additional partner, correct? This is why it's really important to practice it. Very good. Okay, let's keep going. Threat, threat, threat! Okay, my flashlight will mark the threat. Are you ready? Stand by, stand by. Threat, 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 threat! Threat, 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 threat! Threat, 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 threat! Threat, 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 threat! And... Threat, 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 threat! Right, which brings me to the next point, which kind of connect with number two. And that is the whole issue of momentum and tide. Um, when we look about on, on this environment and we talk about momentum and tight, we look into a, a very high probability of friendly fire. Think about it as the following. Number one is gonna come close to that apex over here. At this point, he will hear someone on the corner. He will hear some steps or maybe he will hear a gun being rocked, right? He will not jump around the corner and start shooting, right? Why? Because he need to identify. What's gonna happen then is will be someone stopping and like, what is it, what is it, what is it? At the same time, there will be a guy from the back who's trying also to see what it is because he's feeling threatened, right? And this is one of the biggest issues we have that at this moment, you have a lot of guys aiming down, especially with pistols, by the way, that are floating around. They want to see, they want to see, they lose perception on the environment. And at some really shitty point, the guy will start moving to them or whatsoever. They will see a threat for a very short amount of time. They will press the trigger, but that thing will be too close to their friend's head. Okay, now uh, this is the moment where many people don't believe me and then in the next day we do force and force and then everybody see it. Okay, uh, we had all kind of incidents from people shooting their friends from the back of the head to people shooting their friends in the hand. It happens, it's real. Okay, so just keep it in mind. Threat, 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 threat! And reset. Everybody come here really uh, close to me really quick. Let's do a quick discussion, really quick and to the point. What do you think? Does it make sense to you? Makes sense. Okay. Any questions about that? What do we do with tight spaces? Tight spaces, like you mean like inside rooms and stuff like this, right? Okay. Right. Hallways, for example, where we can't use the space, right? For example, in the last group, you recognize some of you were required to get closer to each other, right? Why? Because that's how it is. Okay. Here comes the next rule, and that is the muzzle, muzzle before flesh. All right, good. If I don't have my working space, coming in here, you will be over there. Make a quick space, uh, sorry, make a quick circle around him. Let's go. Just some quick circle around him and it takes space, like two steps or something like this. It's two steps away from him. Very good, just something really simple. Okay, stop. If I am here and I, let's say I have here a closet or here I have a wall, whatever, I'm very confined. Either that I will let him do it by himself because I don't want to risk him or I will use the muzzle before flash, meaning I will get into a physical connection with them. Why? Because of the following reason. So right now, I have a pistol, right? This pistol, if used improperly, will put him in, in a risk, right? Because it's a shorter weapon system, correct? Good. What we see often is that if guys need, uh, for example, in a hallway, right? If guys are working together and they have a threat at the front, they will always will, always will be the asshole from the back who is trying to do something like this. Or still have a body contact, but he's shooting from here or from here. Is this acceptable? Not at all. Why? Try to fix a stoppage in your gun right now. I can anticipate that. So what we want to do is to utilize the muzzle before flash. Principle number one, get that muzzle beyond his flash. How it will look like? Like this. Make sense? Good. Now, by having my arms here, the shoulder to shoulder and elbow to elbow, I create a physical barrier, like a wall. Meaning if something happens to him, something like, for example, he's pushing me to the right because he's escaping from someone, or he has a stoppage and he's just naturally doing this movement, I will naturally, even if I'm in the middle of shooting, it will bring my weapon away from him. And this is a really nice failsafe because if I will be behind him and he will do the same movement and in the same time will shoot a threat, you saw what happened. It was very close to his face. Make sense to everybody? 
This is regarding the hand. Let's talk again really quick about the hand work. I'm here behind him, okay? I am not from the back. If I have body contact from my, uh, uh, um, from my hands or from my fingers, it's a no-go. This is an absolute no-go. The body contact has to come from the elbow or from the shoulder. Does it make sense to everybody? That's all, okay? Left side, my weaker side, it's the same story, but here I'm gonna try to use a little bit of a chicken wing, okay, to get this distance from him. Why? Because it's my weak side. Um, come over here, you are a right-hander. Regarding the uh, long gun, this is an important remark. Okay, deploy the weapon forward. If you are coming from your weak side and you don't have time to do a shoulder transition because it's too much time and also your equipment can get stuck in his equipment, um, what I want you to do is the following. Use a chicken wing here to get the distance between your weapon system. This is a short weapon, good example. To get a distance between your uh, uh, weapon system and the partner here. Reason for that is, is that one, if exactly, if the weapon will be too close to him or let's say from the back even, we will see a stoppage, we will see hits on the elbow. With the compensator, it's also not so comfortable. So get a distance by having a chicken wing. And I recommend to get that chicken wing with the elbow in the rib cage. Reason for that will be that if he will start moving, and pay attention, I'm gonna push him right now. If he will start moving, it will take the elbow and the movement will translate into the rest of the body, okay? So this is just to make you aware about that. This is regarding how we uh, uh, flow with the weapon in muzzle before flash, okay? We talked about what happens here, we talked about the arms, I think it's pretty simple, right? Let's talk about the footwork and the entire weapon manipulation, okay? Because this is really important for me. Okay, you will be to the front, you will be behind him in a high ready position. So for this drill, what I'm asking you is to simulate a situation like in a, in, a, in a hallway, okay? Imagine that there is a wall here, let's say just for now, and imagine that here you don't have a working space, and right now he's engaging a threat over there, okay? I want you to be in a high ready behind him, okay? He's already having a wrong footwork, which is good, because we want to fix it in a second. From the moment I will say, up, you will get into position and you will try to engage me. Are you ready? Three, two, one, up! Okay, perfect, let's break it down. Okay, first of all, always the leading foot, so the foot away from my partner is the foot that goes out. So for example, here he did it good, take that foot here, that foot goes back, okay, good. Try to uh, apply the muscle before flash, meaning elbow control, uh, elbow contact to your partner, everything like this, very good. This is the correct footwork and the correct body position for working together in a muzzle before flash. Why is the fit like this? Very simple. If he needs to move backwards because he wants to extract his body or he needs to do something else, that fit is available. Furthermore, if he will be attacked by someone with a knife, whatever, or the guy will run to him, like in the hyperculture, you remember? 2015, when the guy just ran out, right? And I'm gonna run to him and he will go to the backwards it will have more stability, even if you will start falling down. You see the fit? Good. Switch the fits. If he will shoot like this, natural point of aim is lost, the body is locked biomechanically, you can see the hips, and all of his weight now is projected forward, which means if I will just press on him like this, he can fall down. Make sense? Good. Switch legs. Very good. Okay, reset behind the body. One more remark regarding a high ready position. Some guys putting the elbow on the friends and make weight on him. Don't touch your friend, you don't need to. Just be behind him, ready to go. High ready could be dangerous because often we see guys who are very lazy. Oh, perfect, come over here. Let's just, yeah, come over here. Let's make it even harder for me. He's a taller guy, perfect example. You'll be behind him. What we see very often is guys who deploy the weapon, switch your fits just for the demonstration, they start to deploy the weapon already from here, which puts their partner in a great danger. Why? Because always the trigger can get stuck in sling, communication, whatever, and it can get pulled. So what we want you to do, guys, is always to bring the gun first away from my friend and only then to deploy it, and then to apply the muzzle before flash and legs. Make sense to everybody? Very good. Let's talk about the uh, weak side really quick. In the end, it's the same story. Which fit should go out now? This one, right? It's the further away from my friend, right? Okay, let's go. 
up, okay, is out. So you see what happened, there is a disconnection here, right? Good. What I want you to do is to get a little bit closer to him. You are lower than him, then it's actually good. That feet goes forward, okay, good. If he will start moving whatsoever, he will move into him and the gun will go as well, okay? Good. Make sense for everybody? Yeah. Perfect, good. Are there any questions? Good. Okay, let's practice it. Let's continue with LCC, a last point of cover and concealment, which is the yellow line right here. So let's say that we continue. Let's say we didn't lose momentum. Let's say it's tight, but we divided our team and we're good to go. Here comes the next issue that we have across all kinds of concepts. Doesn't matter if you're running across a room or you just slice your way. Let's imagine that you were standing right here and you were slicing. You were slicing, you were slicing, and you saw someone. Okay, you saw someone, and of course, because you're, you're scared for your life and you've, something made you convinced that there is a danger waiting for you, your natural reaction was flinching away, right? So right now you have a situation in which you are reactive and the guy or any person who was there is proactive, correct? Good. What we see often is that the guys, they will flinch back and then they will start slicing again. They will repeat the movement from before after something happens. So again, they will come, they will see someone, they will flinch back and then they will try again to come around the corner. And basically what we say is that from the moment you trigger that angle around the, the apex, which means you could see that deeper part, you, you pass the last point of cover and concealment. Meaning, even if I went back, I have to work out of the assumption that I don't have cover and concealment anymore. I don't have it. Why? Because if there is anyone floating on that area, his eyes are fixed where? On that apex over here. Let's do a really quick uh, demonstration. Okay, good. Um, you can see that apex over here, correct? I want you now to look in that direction, all right? You, you still have peripheral view here? You can see my hand a little bit? Okay, good. So normally, let's say I'm here, I'm slicing my way, and I see a guy with a vest. What does the vest uh, m uh, means for you? Exactly, so probably either you will freeze or you will flinch back, right? Let's go out of the assumption that you flinched back because you were really stressed, okay? Simple guy work, okay? So I'm coming from here, he looks in that direction, I'm going away. He recognized that movement, right? What happens for someone, you're a sniper, what happens to someone who picks up a movement from his peripheral view? I'm looking at it. Looking at it, right? Human thing, you can't, ex you can't uh, 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 fool it, right? So I went in, I saw him, something caused me to, 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 uh, to go away, and now his eyes are fixed where? Right here, right? Good. Now, if you would stand up, and you're, yeah, exactly, you can stand up. Your eyes are fixed here, right? I'm standing now right here, correct? Good. Who is fixed on my point of inbound? Here, right? He knows exactly where I'm coming from. Okay, take a few steps over there while keeping eye contact on this apex. Your view remains the same technically, even you can see more than me, right? Your eyes are orienting only around one fact. Doesn't matter where he will be in the room, even deeper or there, doesn't matter. From the moment I'm coming back, he's locked on my point of inbound. That means if I'm creeping back again, you will get me, okay? So that's why we say thank you. From the moment you are passing that corner, last point of cover and concealment, work out of the assumption that you don't have cover and you don't have concealment anymore. Uh, in our system, there are three types of attacks which we can utilize past this point, but at this point, I will not uh, uh, clarify them, okay? Okay, so basically we talked about um, the online rule in CQB, in situations where we have space and so on and so on. And right now we are going to practice the muzzle before flash, which is a rule we are using for situations, for example, like a hallway where, for example, I'm standing like this, there is a wall here, and there is like just one meter space here and two people need to engage a threat, right? Um, this is a small tip. Again, this is really, really important stuff. These things, you can be a really experienced shooter, an amazing tactician, but the fact is most people failing in this, okay? Um, it's often neglect neglected in training and I really recommend people to train it, okay? So let's go through the drill really quick. Um, basically what's gonna happen is, is that we're gonna focus on the footwork, we'll focus on the body contact. And if you, if you pay attention now, when they were looking at me, for example, these two guys here, um, he's aiming at me, right? So 
if he will try to follow me right now and I will run to the right, you see what happens, right? Good, okay. Contact left. Contact right. Body contact, footwork, footwork. Every person look on the footwork. Don't forget, the first feet also goes forward, not backwards. It has to be forward. It's just like we slice the, the frames of the, do of the doors, okay? It's the same. Imagine that your partner is like the apex of the th threshold, okay? Good. Contact right. Contact left. Don't be lazy. Don't sweep your friend head. First flow the weapon, then put it on thread. All right. I will be a threat now. Stand by. Reset. Be behind your partner in a high ready position. Left. Body contact, very good. Good footwork, really good. Contact, left. Always weapon straight, weapon straight, 12 o'clock. Contact, right. Reset, stand by. One more time, the last time. Weapons forward to 12 o'clock. Three, two, one. Contact, left. Contact, right. Contact, left. Contact, right. Reset. Back to the wall story of friendly fire. Before we continue, because this is something that for us is really important. Uh, every course, doesn't matter with special forces, police guys, doesn't matter. Um, we really see this issue, okay? And that is shooting from the depth. I wanna show you a really quick picture here. I do it like in many courses and I don't know why it takes time for people to recognize it. Now, context-wise, just to give you click, uh, uh, quick information, this is an L shape active shooter scenario. 20 actors inside or something like this and one asshole with a gun shooting everybody. The team is coming around the door. Just by the moment that he saw the threat, Murphy kicks in, stoppage on a pistol and he dropped to fix it. He had really big problems over there. Then we have a, a, a traffic jam on the door. What is the problem here? The guy in the back in the shadow, uh, where you see the light on the knee on the second guy, like, it looks like he's shooting from behind, but there's like the muzzle is way behind this guy, so he probably shoots the knee or the elbow of his own team guys if they move too fast or not in this knowledge. Very good. So if you can see, if you will pay attention, very, very nice you recognize it, this guy shot. If no one believes me, I can, uh, I can even uh, prove it to you. There is here a smoke it's clear that he was shooting. Here's some uh, ni interesting fact. Eight, eight bullets landed on the shield from the back, documented. Okay, eight bullets. This is very experienced people and yet they came into a situation where eight bullets are landing on the shield from the back. Furthermore, the individual here has no chance, he has no chance to anticipate any movement from these three people. In fact, he cannot see both of them anymore, he can't. So tomorrow, for example, we will talk about this issue of friendly fire and especially with L shapes and this kind of rooms. Okay, it's a big issue. Okay, um, and again, this is a really good example that doesn't matter how experienced yourself. If your tactics are not meant to deal with different parameters that could take place in reality, you will end up being pushed into a situation where you are shooting from a place where you shouldn't. When we did the after action report, he stated clearly, well, I saw a threat, I was confident in my ability to shoot him, and I remembered as I shot him. And I, I also remembered as I was hitting him. And then I told him, no, look, look on the shield. Eight shots from the back. Okay, good, let's continue. All right, set him up, ready? Okay, basically, so until now, we trained in an area which was pretty much empty of obstacles and stuff like this, right? We just dropped into the area, some, you know, like table, chairs, and all that kind of stuff, and basically, what we want to show to the guys is how the presence of these objects will affect the constellation and the probability of friendly fire. So again, we're not trying to replicate here some kind of a major scenario. We just try to replicate for them a situation where they will be pushed into actually flagging each other. Okay? So pay attention to that. They will try to do both online, both muzzle before flash, all depends on the constellation of the objects in relation to the guys over there. So let's watch it real quick. 
So as you can see, the guy over here, he was blocked by the chair, had no more space of working, and he was forced to work with his partner. Now that he's familiar with the principle, he worked with him with Mother Before Flash. If he didn't, if he wouldn't be aware about this principle, he would probably stop here and start shooting from here. This is something we see very often in Force and Force. It took me some, some years to understand that actually, but yeah, it happens. Okay, you see what happens here? Another very perfect example, you can see the chair was forcing him to be together with him. Very good. Okay, I will join the team, let's go. I'm with you guys. I'm with you, let's go. Bravo, bravo. So stop, you can see here, for example, if he will have some kind of, of an anomaly, like for example, he will need to move away, he could run easier, easily into his muzzle, right? Therefore, he need to get two steps away from him or have the muzzle before flash, which means body contact. Make sense? Okay, continue, let's go. Charlie! Exactly, earn the angle, find it, get it. Yeah, very good. Keep going. And reset. Guys, questions, questions, come on. Are there any questions? Come over here. Let's do it really quick. Are there any questions, anything you want to know? Why do we do it? Why, why, why do we train it? Safety-wise. I mean, it's fine, it's cool, safety-wise. Okay. I don't want to shoot my friend. Okay. Honestly, how often right now did you recognize that you were pushed into a situation where the chance of friendly fire was high if you didn't have a principle? Nearly every time. Nearly every time, right? Okay, good. Are there any questions, anything you want to say? What do I do if I don't have space because, for example, I get blocked by the table? Okay, if you don't have space. If you really, for example, come here, congratulations, you're a big wall right now, mm -hmm. even though you're not. Okay, your weapon is up. Okay, if I recognize that I don't have working space, meaning I, I, I can only shoot if I'm coming here, let him do it. Don't destroy his shot, let him do it. You know, it sounds a little bit weird because there will be a firefight, but let him work, okay? Because if I'm going to block him or come from here and try to shoot or do stuff like this that some people do, it's a complicated situation. It destroys his ability to bail out. And second, the chance of me causing him an injury by, you know, muzzle flight, you know, all that kind of stuff is too high. Just let him do it. Make sense? Perfect. Any other questions? Okay, good. Thank you, guys. Let's continue to the next module. Let's go.